Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna do scatter setups. We've done this in the past. We're gonna do it today in some kind of consolidated way. So I'm gonna show three different ways to do it. I also wanna thanks to all my Patreon. I launched Patreon last month and I already have like 20 Patreons, which is amazing to me. It motivates me to, to create even better content. So I'm definitely gonna put more effort into it. I'm also testing new editors. So I'm finally gonna have more time to create more content and just kind of ramp up the YouTube again, creating new material packs. I wanna really create for myself library of materials that I can just drag and drop and they will all work together. And we also released recently these 15 grid mats that are available on Patreon exclusive now. There are links in the description for my Patreon. So if you want to look it up, then definitely do it. We do scene like these and these and these and yeah, definitely check this out. And let's go into this video. Let's stop this intro. Ha! Hey, welcome to this video. Let's make something beautiful. I have turned on my bridge. We're going to import some assets from bridge. I've been inspired lately by seeing all those beautiful landscape from sketchy visuals. And he did something recently in Octane. Uh, Marcus Gunzer did something. And so I wanted to do Redshift version that will show different types of scatter that you can use to create different patches of grass and how you can combine different colors while using assets from Maxon. So if you have access to these capsules, which I don't have the Maxon one, so we're gonna have to use just the ones that are available, but you can use any type of grass trees that you have and it will work for you. We're gonna use metric scatter for this. So let's go into this. I'm gonna start by putting in figure just so we know exactly who we're talking about. This is Michael. Hey, Michael. and we're gonna put in some landscape, which is the great starting point. We can create some landscapes or Michael. I usually scale it just proportionally by pressing T and dragging up the whole landscape and then press E and move it back. I tend to position my camera from the front so we can go and reset our camera. I'm gonna lift this null that is above my camera and lift it up and push it even further back I'm going to look into my camera and set object tab focal length to 85 to get more portrait looking lens. So this kind of aspect will work nicely, but we will have to go further back. The reason why I'm using this operating null above my camera is that I can position my camera wherever I want, but I can still keep my camera at zero. So when I animate my camera, I'm always having fresh, clean transform to start with. Now that I have one landscape, I can just hold control and drag one of these axes and move it further, move it on the right hand side and maybe push it a bit back to create this separation. And then maybe we do the same thing, holding control, dragging one of the axes and dragging this yellow handle to bring it up. Now to change the landscape itself, you click on the landscape, go to object and change the width segments and change the depth segments and you can make it maybe a little less rough. So further you go back, less detail you need. So really you can get rid of all the fine furrows for the landscapes at the back and maybe make it wider. Now they're all at the same level, but as you can see here, we kind of see this empty space. I tend to put a plane just to kind of make sure I'm covering everything up and we can make this plane quite big and this plane doesn't need any segments because I won't be using displacement on this plane, at least for now. So we're kind of saving that polygon power for later. And now I moved my camera, so I need to reset it again, but I will always get back to this position because of that null that is actually solving my position. So when I'm moving my camera and I press reset, I will get back to that position, which I initially wanted. So now, I can move this, I can make this a bit larger, push it further back, and we can also make this bit larger on a Z space and create some sort of landscape like this. This could be way larger. This could be something like that. Push this up. So by playing this, you're coming up with your own landscape. I'm sure you will 
come up with something awesome and creating composition what can help is to really start with grid early so you can display grid i have this turned off so i'm going to turn this on i can see my grid and i can position these uh, landscapes in a grid so that it makes for a good composition it would be good to look at some tutorials for landscape photography but we're just gonna keep it very simple like that and then we can have a little platform in the middle just some kind of a focus point where we can build stuff so i'm just gonna make it bigger bring some segments and push it further back i'm gonna jump out of my camera and just kind of have a look and bring in some dome light drag the dome light into my light folder and turn on the ipr and i'm going to be looking through my camera since this point and i'm just going to be judging the landscape like this we can already apply some hdri so i'm just going to go to my 3d assets go to hdris do 1725 that's a beautiful time of a day and i'm gonna reduce the exposure and also reduce the saturation just so i keep it nice and bland now i have this landscape which i quite like i think this can go further and we will scatter on those three landscapes and i will try to use different techniques for each landscape just so you can see the variety of things you can do with these scatter processes now the way i organize it is for each landscape i'll create each own scatter so metric scatter you can find in your redshift app and you can go to, into objects and metric scatter i have my redshift settings here just so i like to click it straight away and let's start importing some grass and I'm, we're going to use bridge for that so i'm just gonna open up the bridge which i since closed somehow and i'm gonna look at my local what i've already downloaded just so we don't waste any time by downloading more stuff i tend to go for the same grass even though i should download probably more variations I really like this basket grass so let's click on this plus and import it or we can click on that and first set the resolution to the highest possible so we get a 4k resolution i'm going to press export but before i do that i'm going to make sure i have my node editor turned off so i'm going to be exporting it's basically it would get cancelled if i would have my node editor because the bridge doesn't support the new node editor it still works with the old shader graph which i dislike i just don't like it anymore i got so used to new node editor even through all its flaws and bugs i much prefer it over this experience but this is what we have and we can convert it later to nodes but for now let's leave it as it is and we have beautiful basket grass what i can see already i can highlight all these grasses and i can put them in null call it basket grass and press T for scale and click anywhere apart from the axis and scale it to about the scale. You know, if you see Michael here, Michael's kind of giving us good idea what the basket grass could look like. We can go even less. This would be our basket grass and we can see through the landscape. Let's call it landscape three, actually landscape one. The one on the right will be landscape two and then the the one further back will be landscape three. Now I'm gonna bring in matrix and I'm gonna make landscape one child of that matrix. The reason why I do that is because of organization. I want these objects to be hierarchically organized that matrix is the master and inside that matrix, you have all the items that are involved with that matrix so matrix helps us uh, scatter these cubes here and basically create points and we can manipulate that matrix just by these object values here where i can spread it but i can also set different mode to like object and then i can choose object that will scatter onto so we, i choose my child that landscape and you'll see these now appear on that object and it's only 20 so i can make this count higher and it will randomly scatter all over this object until i say stop so i say stop and now i need to tell metrics that i don't want these i don't want to use these cubes these are just your guides where where the grass could be so you go into matrix object there is a redshift object tag 
and there is an optimized spheres going to be scattered on that landscape. We're going to set it to custom objects and drag our whole null into it. But that actually works, which is funny because that used to didn't work. And I prefer to just drag all of these separately. So I'm just going to drag these separately. You see they're a bit smaller, which is again, funny, but you have a scale multiplier here to make them bigger. So you can go like 0.2 or three. And let's say this is the size I want them to be. And the reason why I want them separately, so I can maybe delete those four and I can have only three types of grass on that landscape. But for now, I'm just going to put basket grass as a child of that matrix, just so I keep everything organized. And we're going to call this scatter grass one. So landscape one, scatter grass one, keeping it nice and tidy. And we will add more types of grass to that landscape. So what I'm going to do, just go to bridge and bring in the fountain grass, which is awesome. Fountain grass, exporting it to cinema, immediately can see it here. And we're going to wait a bit before all the object will load. I can highlight all of them while scale selected. I can drag anywhere, click and drag down and I can scale them down to be roughly about that size of that basket grass. You don't have to. This is my personal preference. I'll put them in the null just to keep them tidy. Call them fountain grass and drag them into that scatter grass one. I can also open it up, highlight all these objects, and then click on the object tag and drag them inside there. Now you see they are being scattered together with the basket grass. So you see the patches of green and patches of brown, but they have some kind of a weird positioning. They seem to be laying flat. So what do you need to do? You essentially go into the matrix object and go to transform and in pitch rotation, you change it to minus 90. This will then turn the grass up as it should be. And it follows the normals of the landscape. So it kind of grows <laughs> on a side way, which I'm kind of fine with. And we can randomize this later using random effector. Where we at currently is at two, two beautiful grass patches. And we can make this thicker just by going into the matrix object and maybe pushing it to 10,000. This will fill it up even more. Sometimes if you don't want to push a lot of different grass patches, you can play with the scale and you can fill it up this way. You can make sure, you know, these are so big that it basically covers all the holes. The other technique that you can use is the using some sort of grass material. I have this from Vincent Schwenk. He has new pack and he created kind of a material that's called fake grass and you can place it on your landscape, some sort of grass material that will hide all the other imperfections of those um, empty patches. So you have kind of a grass, grass underneath and uh, also the bigger bushes. But uh, what I will do, I will actually make it smaller. So we go back to 2.5, I think, and make them make it way more. So we go to 50,000. So this is now nice. And we already see this nice thick grass. And this could be a beautiful first landscape. We have option to go into metrics object and distribution is now sequential, which means it goes through objects sequentially one, two, three, turn, and then scatters again and just goes, we can bring more randomization by just choosing random and it will scatter them by random selection, which creates more patterns here. Like you see uh, some of the grasses, they get uh, patched together. So this creates some kind of nice variation. Uh, when you have a scatter grass selected, the matrix object with the green icon, you can hold shift and click on the random effector, uh, random object. So you find it within all these effector. You have the random effector here. I have it put out because I use it quite often and I just hold shift and click apply to it. So default values are basically position and it, you'll see it, it kind of scatters and you can do crazy effects with that. I did video 
uh, where I was using just the random effector and grass to kind of create beautiful slow motion videos. But we're not going to use that for now. We're just going to turn off the position and turn on the rotation and rotate 360 degrees on horizontal axis. And this will rotate the grass randomly 360 degrees. So that's a full rotation that we get. And we, we seem to get already beautiful natural scatter and we can do a couple things. You see this landscape has now, you know, strong finish here. So you kind of need to find a way to blend it. And there's multiple ways to hide it. You can either bring in objects. We could bring in this Icelandic sandy volcanic rock. So I could just say like export to cinema and bring that volcanic rock there. And one way I could do it, I could just kind of rotate it and then push it like this and just kind of hide these moments, hide these elements where it seems to digital it wouldn't be nature. So let's say we would hide this by this rock, which is not a bad idea. It's not the greatest, but it's just one of the options you have. We can increase the size of that platform, make it taller, just so we don't see any grass coming through that. And now we've created sort of the first landscape. I want to go through first technique of how we can color our grass, just so we don't have that greenish style looking grass. And we can open up that material. But before I do, I'm going to press Shift C and I'll say convert material. You have options use convert all materials to nodes. So I'm going to click on that and this will open up other two options. So sometimes you can miss that. This will open up other two so you can convert all and do nothing or convert all and replace the current one with the shader graph. So I'll do that because I love to work with the node and I think it's much faster. And now you see these got changed and now they replaced. They've been fully restored as a node materials and now I can open it up and I can see my material of the fountain grass here and it's been all nicely UV'd in onto one texture which I have multiple ways to color it and usually what I used to do I would be just removing that and now I have just gray grass and I can make it for example purple because that's my color and now I have these green patches so if I would have the second grass here, the basket grass, again, open up the node editor and remove that albedo as well. I would still retain the roughness and translucency, um, but I would change basically the color this way. And now I have purple and blue landscape, which is kind of nice. To further solidify this, I can also go into that Vincent material, remove completely all the nodes that leads to that material and just change it to some sort of darker blue and just create that underneath layer just to bring that landscape together. I can do the same thing for the stone, but for now I'll just keep it as it is and we'll bring the whole scene together once we know all the scatter of all the grass. So let's focus on the grass setup too. Let's bring this rock into our objects and we keep the scatter setups away. I'm just going to bring the pedestal into our objects, our figure into our objects. And now we have a landscape and we have the plane so we can put it into our scene. So we call it floor. And for now, we're not going to do anything uh, with it. Uh, we'll, we'll just focus on that later. Let's first sort out, you know, our scatter setups. So now I need more grass. So I'm just going to go back to that bridge. And in a bridge, I have Leptodania. Leptodania is super good and I'm going to export it. There's plenty of those. You don't need to use all of them. You can use maybe half and you can press T again, make it smaller, make it about just the knee length just to bring them all together and create new metric scatter. Call it scatter grass to bring the landscape to into it and then highlight the object tag, change the mode to custom objects and bring this grass that you put all the G and call it Leptodania and you drag these onto there. Maybe all of them, that would be good. So we have them all inside and they're currently scattering onto these guys on our matrixes. So we know that we need to change our matrix mode to object and select our landscape, drag it into our object input. And now we having scatters matrixes on that. So we can straight away do the transform minus 90. 
which will lift our grass. So we already know that it's going to happen. So we straight away can do scatter minus 90 and we can also bring that count to 10,000 initially. We have a 10,000 of the Leptodania grass in and we can maybe scale it a bit up. So I'm just going to go scale multiplier and see how I can scale it from here. This looks quite good. And we're going to try to scatter a little bit differently this time. Let's bring in more grass and we'll decide how we're going to patch this. I'm just going to open the bridge and I see this desert cotton. So I'm going to mix it up with desert cotton, bring it in, put it into Alt G, call it desert grass. And also both of these grasses, bring them as a child of that scatter grass too. So if I close these, I know everything's in there, what I need, I just can keep them closed. But whenever I need to come back to it, I know I don't have to go through all these objects through my scene, but everything is nicely involved inside that. Now I'm going to have to open that desert grass, highlight all these, click on that scatter grass to object tag and in the particle stop custom objects, I'll just drag them in as a additional grass. And this nicely filled our landscape. That's the power of the desert grass. Like you can really see how powerful we can change it to random. And we can also bring another random effector to do the job. I'm just going to highlight this matrix shift and click on the random object. And now it's applied. And I'm going to just turn off the position, do the rotation 360. Perfect. By the way, don't forget to save your projects. This is absolutely mistake number one, which I did. Landscape fun with flags. I'm just going to open uh, one of my older projects, Island Shrine. I think it was this one when I definitely didn't keep it that tidy, but we use some nice crystals there. And it's good to be safe because computer is starting to go into crash mode. I can hear the noise of the fans. Yeah, it looks like we crashed the cinema. Oh, it's loading. Baking viewport exchange images. Oh, it's here. Wow, it's quite nice. So I did some of the landscapes there. I'm not sure if any method here used was some kind of special. You see you can matrix object landscape inside, grass inside. And I'm using plane effector as a linear field. Okay, we can show this method. But there's one more thing I want to show. And I think it's from my Patreon Dropbox, Patreon tutorials, wonderful dashboards. And there is wonderful dashboard test one. Okay. And in this method, you can see the, the level of how I'm scattering grass. It's only on a part of that landscape, but not everywhere. We selectively choosing where it's going to be scattered using random field as a noise. We're using perlin and quite high scale. If I be changing that noise, I'll be also changing that scatter. Okay, so let's try this technique ourselves now. And I'm just going to highlight this matrix scatter and I'm just going to press shift and do the plane effector. So now I'm affecting with the plane effector too. And this plane effector has the default values lift everything up. So it's just going to use that grass to lift it up, but we don't want to use that. And we are actually going to use uniform scale and choose everything minus one. So I'm just going to make it disappear. And then I'm going to use field, random field to kind of make it appear again. But I can use now scale to kind of create variation in that field that I can even go into remap and just kind of dial it even further. So now I can have a patch of this grass that I can go into the object tag and you know, scale it in that multiplier. And it only affects that part where we kind of see scattered matrices. So let's show it again, just for the clarity. We're going to have the scattered grass. I'm going to apply by holding shift onto that matrix object, the plane object, go to the parameters, turn off the position, turn on the scale, click on the uniform scale, just so I want to everything applied same way uniformly, go minus one. So one minus one is zero. So nothing is displayed. And then I'm going to bring in field, random field to kind of bring stuff back. So it's going to be affecting and I can then use remapping to just kind of remap that field and also go into the noise and activate the scale to create different patches of grass, right? So I can have some kind of different patches and I can spread it 
by using this X value and create this kind of a different level of scattering. So I create these bushes there. You know, nature seems to be scattering this way. So we're just going to do the same scatter as nature does. Uh, I actually quite like it how it was before, something like this and we can make it a little bit smaller. I think I went a little bit overboard there. So if we make it three, we're going to get these nice patches like this. Now, I want to actually combine this with another scatter. So I'm ju just going to create another matrix scatter, call it scatter grass 2A. So I know these two are related. Two and two is fine. This one is A. So it's kind of still works within the same. And I will put it as a child of that master scatter and this secondary scatter will basically do the grass everywhere else and we're gonna find something for it something just very simple so I'm just, maybe we're gonna download something grass I love this simple grass let's do the wild grass yeah so I'll download this one we'll see what we get from that I've downloaded 4k resolution which is maximum and I'll export it into our cinema 4d now this scatter I will actually select into object mode. I'm just going to delete a couple of those. I'm not going to be choosing which one for the sake of this length of the tutorial. And let's say this is what I'm happy with. I'm just going to scale it a little bit down, Alt G, grass, Kikuyu, and then drag it as a child of that grass A scatter. And we're going to select the same object. So I'm just going to scatter A and select the same landscape. So we're going to be scattering with two different scatters on the same object. So if I will be increasing it now, you see how it how it kind of uses the same landscape irrespectively of that first scatter. And then we open up that object tag on the scatter A2 to A, custom objects, Kikuyu grass, and drag it in. Now I have that grass in. I'm just going to scale it to 2.5, just so I see it more. And we're going to do 25,000. So it's just going to fill that space in with the smaller type of grass. So we have kind of a random patch. And we could actually try to scale it further, see how much will affect the height of the feather. Uh, I want to be quite contrasty. So our option is here to actually either use that power of that random effector and that random field because we could essentially use same tactic. We can use scatter grass to A and apply the plane effector to it as well. Now it will lift by default our grass, but it only lifts the grass that we scattered in. And with that knowing, we can actually turn that off, go to scale, uniform, minus one, and now it's gone. So we don't want it. Bye. And then we can use the same random field. So we're going to open up the fields within that new plane effector and drag that random field in. I want to use the same one. So now it scatters onto the same thing, but we're just going to use invert and it will use the other parts of the object to scatter onto. So we scatter some grass on that. And now we just only need to increase that amount and we should be fine. But it seems to be I'm still scattering on everything. So I did something wrong. I'm also color remapping. Oh, what am I doing here? Let's try to bring this to 65,000. I want to fully cover it up. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm not sure if that achieves anything better, but it's definitely brought more random element to it where some of the patches, they just grew wilder while the other grass just stays low if you know what i did wrong on that invert please let me know because i assume if i invert that random field i would get the opposite of that selection which i didn't get so if i remove that again which pro provided almost no difference i have this random field right it's gonna turn off that scatter grass so i have this random field and i'm gonna create new plane effector and drag that random field in And it should use the same scatter as we did. Just need to scale it, minus one. If I do minus two, there's no minus two. There is actually a certain inversion of that pattern. It's very funny and I'm doing something silly. Whoever knows, please help. But I think it works, sort of. So if I keep showing this, this kind of fills in. It doesn't too much.
Yeah, I think it works. So I'm quite happy with this. And I think we can now go into these grasses and maybe I have this grass Kikuyu, which is our foundation grass. So I'm just going to go again, Shift C, convert all materials to nodes and then click convert and replace all materials, which will convert them to nodes. I can open it up, click on show node editor. And I have this albedo here. I can remove this and bring in color user data. So color user data holds all the different inputs that you can use, you know, to bring in different color data from certain properties like particles, MoGraph, and we're going to use actually MoGraph data. So if I'm going to open up the presets of the color user data, I'm going to choose MoGraph and color. And now if I click on that scatter too, I can bring in plane effector. I can actually use this one and I can use this color to color my grass actually, which is funny enough. I can use gradient and I can change this gradient from purple to blue and it will get applied. Maybe this will be something more. Uh, and it, it's kind of bad because the purple we're getting is actually going into the, the best thing uh, for this would be actually activate that color with uh, a linear field. So we could use linear field and push it and I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm going to create special plane effector only for the color. So I'm just going to go plane effector holding shift and turn off all the parameters, use fields, linear field, activate the linear. And now I have a color and I can either choose different color, just going to be singular because that bright green was quite a, kind of good, but I can use that gradient. And now the gradient is actually controlled by this. So I can kind of push it there just so I see it better I can spread it further just so it's softer, softer gradient. And I can have that blue from that landscape on the left, right? So it's going to carry on blue, but it's just going to go into some sort of orangey and we'll create that kind of fade of that purple. So we can even do purple here and we get a nice little brand of like a purple to pink and then to orange. And I can move this gradient just to kind of get more orange in there, or I can push the whole linear field to kind of control it. So it's better to name these, you know, you can name color grass and this plane effector actually controls that scale minus one and it will disappear. And if I do one, uh, it will be everywhere. And if we did minus two, it somehow kind of works a little bit, but yeah, it does. So I'm sure someone will explain in comments what I did wrong. Then let's do the other grass just to kind of bring it together. And we kind of need to find now the way to elevate it. It's just starting to be really, really powerful in terms of colors. So we need to be careful what kind of colors we are putting in now. And if we even want to do, so this color, the next color could be actually white just so we keep it cleaner. So I'm just going to open up these and remove the albedo and just kind of make it pure, almost pure white, you know, make it a little bit like that. Just kind of this will nicely pair with glass. And we have a couple options for that back landscape and we can always use grass from these imported already. So I'm going to close the scatter setup too. So we have scatter setup one, Scatter setup two. You can see these are not visible. We still see them in a viewport, but they are not visible inside. And if I disable it here, I don't see anything actually, which is not that great. But as long as we don't see it in a render, I think it's fine. What else you can do is to simply, you know, grab all the grasses and just move them away if if that bothers you. Eventually it will because you will want to work on that foreground. For now, I'll just keep it solid. I'll just leave it there and we can bring in more things. So I see what else I have here. I have a xeric grass, which I could um, use for that landscape at the back, or I can just use that wild grass or the Kikuyu grass for that landscape at the back. This is very simple and maybe just keep that landscape non-distracting. Like this one takes a lot of credit. It has these bigger patches, a lot of color. Uh, so let's put that back one a little bit easy. So I'm just going to create scatter three, scatter grass three. And for the sake of those clean folders, I'm just going to import a Kikuyu grass. So we have here 
Now it's much faster because it's been done already. I can delete now the top part because I before I deleted like the bottom part. So now I have like a little bit different patches and I'm just gonna press Alt G, call it Kiku 2 grass and drag it into this. Now the scatter needs uh, its landscape. So I'm just gonna drag that landscape underneath and change the mode to object and select that landscape three as our object. Now, what I did before actually, and now this is the method I just remembered how I use that random field and why it worked. What you can do, you can create, you can create selection, polygonal selection, because now you can create it on these procedural objects. So on landscape, you create polygon selection and choose random field. And that's another way to scatter because now I'm essentially scattering onto that field by using that random field. So again, now I'm, I'm not saying by scale, but I'm just saying where yes and where no by changing scale of that random field. And also this selection tag needs to go into this selection tab. So once I apply there, so this is our landscape and this is my polygonal selection, it will start choosing the polygons based on that random field noise. So if you see a manipulating noise, I'm just choosing the grass patches where it should be. So now with that in mind, let's open up our scatter grass, change it to custom objects, and we will bring in our Kikuyu grass too. And they will appear where they should. I can change the scale multiplier to three or four because it's further back. And now it's unrealistic because it's so far that it just doesn't look good. So change it back to one and bring a load of them, 65,000. Okay, we did 65,000, still not enough. We're gonna go to 75, that's not bad. 100,000, let's kind of fill it up and let's play with the random field a bit. We can change it, we can do the scatter along so we can create these kind of long crochet or we can do the Z scale. So we can just kind of play with that, creating like a big patch here. I think that works. And we can use that fake grass on our landscape to kind of fill all that gap with that, which doesn't look that good, obviously, but it at least provides some texture for us to have something in there. Now, it looks quite disgusting at the moment. <laughs> so let's start, fix it. Let's fix these things just so we can kind of start imagining it, uh, how this could be. Also, you can still go into these landscapes and you can start trying how, how it works if this would be larger or if this actually wouldn't be obstructing that much and would be just a little landscape here. I'm gonna probably change the color. So I'm gonna double that material and apply that different one newly created and change that color of the fake grass to actually be something very bright. So we're just gonna do kind of light white. We're just gonna keep that simple and change that shift C actually convert all materials to nose, convert and replace and change that grass to actually bring it together with everything else. So I'm just gonna do the simple trick the butcher style, just the white. So we have this very simple landscape and we can now make sure everything else is brought together. So I will, I will actually open up these other materials. So we have a leptodania here, desert cotton, and we can look how we affecting them. So this one is white one. Leptodania is actually using that scatter. So let's go scatter one. And we're just gonna try to reduce the saturation of these just to kind of ease it up a little, right? Just so we don't get that brutal saturation. We can look also into that second scatter and look in the color grass, linear field into the fields. So I can see that gradient here working, reduce that saturation on both orange and purple. And now it's kind of slowly coming together and we can have some abstract here on the platform. I can bring some random shapes and we can build some sort of totem. So it has like a, a random shapes here. So I'm gonna go shapes, primitives, and I'll see what I have here. I have these so quite like this. I can delete this. I can keep this, actually this one in the middle one, see the grass already in the way. So we can either disable them like this 
so they disappear from viewport only and i can look at the other grass as well i don't want to see it and the scatter three i don't need to see it and the scatter one on the basket grass i don't need to see it so i just turn off the grass from the viewport just so we can focus on that foreground and building out other elements now i have this null with the black materials we don't really need those so i'm just going to keep those shapes and this one and that so i'm just going to take those three elements highlight them take them out of that null and build something first and then create my own null to put them back i'm just going to look from the different viewpoint and maybe bring these here and build something random uh, we'll see if i can take this shape i'm just moving the axis here but you can also use placement object for these types of operations and just kind of get something funky going this one already <laughs> this left of this left the landscape i can bring in more shapes these are shapes from adobe actually they're quite funky i don't want probably these but I will look for more stuff. We don't need our Michael for now. I uh, quite like these shapes. These are already in good composition here. Let's see what's here, here, here. Okay, none of that, none of that. Okay, I like nine. Let's do nine and open it up. I like this one. This is my new favorite. I'm just gonna bring it there using the placement tool just kind of place it scale it and i like this one place it scale it so the placement tool is super useful for you know it's like i want this to be on the top of the mountain and it's like oh yeah it's there actually we're gonna keep it there i love it and you know i want this to be in this position here like slide it so we can have something like this let's switch to actually white landscape so we're just gonna keep working in 192080 and get something like this i feel like to balance it out we will have to maybe move this on the other side as well maybe rotate it make it smaller just so it feels different but just kind of balance these objects and because they use same material only thing we need to do is to go into that material for the icelandic open it up and we want to use this albedo because it contains all the information of all the shapes of the rocks. So what are we going to do? We're going to bring in color layer. And this is the technique you can use for the grass too. You can use this as a basic object and plug it back. So now when you plug it back, it's actually black because the layer above it is black. But what you can do now, you can change it and you can dial it with the different colors and you can then average it out and it will take the layer below it and average it with your color that you choose so you choose purple it will it will choose purple but while you still see those details from that texture so you can see it in here as well so it, it's not just simple color but it's more to it and then depending how how much you dial it how much you mask it then um that much you get out of it so let's say we keep it like that I'm not gonna keep it purple because you guys would like destroy me so we're just gonna keep it like uh, these white rocks they look quite quite oakish gonna rotate this slightly and then uh rotate this one this way and make it maybe smaller too great now this i believe should be something glassy and to save time i'm just gonna use something from my material and i'm gonna use glitz fire I use Glitzfire for this one, immediately uh, love it. Then I use, I'll just maybe break this one up. I'm just going to keep stacking this. This is some sort of being from a funky town. And we can use this fancy mat on this wheel, which looks weird. And it's because of stacking issue. So I'm just going to need to delete these initial materials. And now it's going to show actual material. So always make sure, you know, there's these old materials that have been applied to those primitives and we can actually get rid of those and for the other one i'm just going to apply spectrum on the on this one which will play with the gradient the gradient is now really like a small scale so i need to scale it up this will scale the noise just so it's more spread out on that object and this is a scaling flakes which I should rename because it's not obvious. So something like that, I can scale it even further. I get different colors out of it, nice. 
Now I need more glass in the middle, so I'm just going to use coral glass to use it on this one. And as you see, it's the very small patches of some kind of noise in it. So again, I can scale the mask just to get bigger patches. And then I can scale these color that are inside of that, maybe even further, just so it gets more softened like this. And on the top of the hill, we can use our Camelio. I'm just guessing here. And I will create kind of a focus point here, I guess, which I'm not sure if I'm liking. And if I use Gammy Star, which is very similar to Glitzfire, we can, we can use these. Then I can rotate the middle one. So I'm just going to rotate it like this and rotate this one. And I'm going to use placement tool to kind of scale it from the bottom. So I don't have to worry about the placement and I can rotate it here as well, just using this tool and maybe just kind of keep sliding it over the top. And I can go outside my camera and just kind of find the correct position like this, just to kind of go in there and just kind of dial it in like that, which I'll get a little bit of that sunlight from the side, which I quite like. This looks like a snowy hill actually, which is convenient. Winter's coming. I don't like uh, the way it's... Now, I like this camera where it is and I really don't want to move it. So I'm just going to highlight my main camera and activate the protection tag. The protection tag you can find in uh, rigging tags and you go to protection here and it will protect all the movements of your camera just so you don't move it accidentally to some weird place. Now, I set these primitives that are left over. So I'll use this and this. I'll just delete everything rest. And we have this shape. So I'm just going to put them all together as uh, shapes and drag them into our objects folder. Now we have three scatter setups and we have those two rocks. We have our platform, which has no material for now. We can change that by applying the chalk rainbow. It's quite a nice material. It does like these kind of flecks of like metal, which I quite enjoy. You can always scale it. If I highlight the platform, open it up and we can call it platform. I can click on that material and I can scale that noise to be, you know, some bigger patches, which probably looks better. I still don't like the colors of these landscapes. So the easiest way for me to, to change this complicated one or make it in some way, so it's work together with um, with the one on the left. And the way I'm going to do it is just going to open up that Scattergrass 2, go into the uh, Scattergrass 2A, color grass, and we have that landscape here. So I'm just going to maybe uh, click the color picker, grab something from here, just some kind of find that similar vibe, which I didn't. The good thing is like you can completely just go, you know, yellow, like try something that you wouldn't try. It's always worth to just go into the madness town just so you can bring it back to something like even, you know, more subtle. So, you know, never be afraid to explore different avenues. You can always find something that is super interesting and you'll be like missing out if you if you never go for it. Now I kind of miss that orange. I'm not going to lie. The orange in combination with this purple wheel, I kind of love this part. I still don't like the the other part. So I'm just going to try to change it to white and that doesn't work either. I'll bring third color into that landscape. Just going to break this apart. And I see that I need to move that linear field a little bit to the left, just so I kind of dial those colors properly and maybe bring that color ream up together closely. So it's just creating that patch and we can create some sort of weird patch there or like a purple, but this goes into white. Nice one. The other thing I want to try is to actually be on that scatter too, but look into that normal scatter and we'll see if we can maybe change those, those two materials that are purely white and maybe give them some sort of, maybe try to bring it together by changing, you know, that color actually uh, into something closer to what is on the left. It needs to be definitely on a bright side. I mean, it can be this orange. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be angry. I mean, it's, it's wild. Yeah. 
I'm not gonna lie, it's wild. If this is orange, then then I'm going back to that color grass and making this yellow. Nope. But I'm just gonna make this purple and make this orange. So it's gonna lead into that side more. And we can try single color. We can try a little bit like pinkish. Yeah, this orange is good, but it's just way too wild. Nice. Okay, <laughs> let's not <laughs> waste any more of your time. We still have that landscape to sort out. I mean, that floor. So I'm just going to hide all these cutters. Let's say you will pretend that I did everything perfectly. And where is the landscape, though? I've hide it into scene. Yes. So I'll just lift it a bit. I'll see how much it go through. And then... I'll make it 4,000 by 4,000, which maximum is 1,000. Okay, but I don't need it to be that long, right? I mean, that big. I think I'm already hiding a lot of the stuff. I'm just gonna make this into, into kind of water material. Just gonna make it easy. It's just gonna apply uh, some reflective uh, material to it. Actually, I'm gonna switch to my node materials just by clicking this and create new material standard. And now it's a node material. Go make some noise into the bump and apply it to that material. This will create illusion of, um, I call it water, and apply that material to that floor. You don't even need to have the segments. You can just have it one by one because this is an illusion or a reflection. It's not physical geometry, so you still keep saving on that. And we're just going to need to scale it because at this moment, it's really tiny waves, which is very bad water. So just gonna scale it to like four, which is not bad. Change the color to dark blue. Maybe this kind of brighter. And we're gonna change the roughness just so we get that clarity, almost like silver-like reflection, which which is much more intact with what we do in here, this kind of alien landscape. So I'm just going to bring this up just so it's not tucked inside that platform. It still bothers me. Just going to have to manually kind of scale it. Now I have that and I have a very simple lighting. I have one dome light and it already looks kind of nice. I have to, you know, give respect to the, to the dome light people. And uh, I'm just going to make it like minus six, which still give us some sort of night time, but then I'm going to bring in a spotlight and make sure I'm going to put target tag on it. So if you don't know where the target tags, it's an animation tag. So if you right click spotlight, you're going to find animation tags and there's a target tag. And as our target object, I'm going to go into my objects and I say, Hey, target the platform. So it will target the platform and then I can choose to lift it and it will follow that platform. I will just keep shining onto that platform and then I can increase the exposure because this light is further away. I can push it to the right hand side and just go a little bit back just so I get that front shine on this landscape. I can bring in the texture into that spotlight and I can go into my 3D assets, animated gobos, gobos by Zach and very speckled. I'm just going to apply that. It will create some sort of patches like that. So I'm going to increase it to like nine, which is wild game. But because it's very dark, I can actually spread it. Uh, it will still look good. So I can spread it like that. I can find some sort of patches that will work. I can maybe move it a bit to the right. So I have a reflection on this rock. I have nothing in here. So what I could do, I can bring in area light. And I can just check it over that way. And if you if you do like lights from your camera position, it's nice that you can look at it, but you can always look at it even if you jump out and you have your main cam locked. So you press that lock main cam and you can move around and you can still see what you're doing. Oh my God, I didn't even know this landscape is this long. See, so you should better jump out of that camera. So I'm just going to make some sort of area light here, but I will make it very narrow by changing the spread and creating some sort of counteraction 
on that landscape here just so we have a lighting even out balance nice just something like that and we can copy that light maybe change it to horizontal and point it towards our landscape at the back just to kind of bring it further like that so this is kind of magical lighting it's like a weird landscape with the very dark very dark sky so the one last thing i would just take all the lights back here obviously you name them <laughs> unlike me and then you can lift back that dome light you turn off the background right and then you create one last thing which is going to be the plane you lift it up rotate it 90 degrees so holding shift to rotating it 90 degrees and pushing it back all the way behind all the landscapes and making it as large as the world and changing the plane to one by one segment because we don't need anything on that plane and then i'm just going to create new material one material standard apply to our plane which we're going to call sky and i'm going to drag it into our lights because it's our light as well we don't need the base color we're just going to apply emission so it's going to be emissive and i'm just going to show node editor bring in ramp and that ramp get plugged into our emission color so this way i can control our you know ramp so i can create like a moody morning so i can have a bottom white orangey and then have a little blue you know on the counter side and now if i look at it from a side then obviously what i'm seeing of that landscape is just that middle part that's why it has no color so what you need to do is to actually drag it as much as you can just so you get that get a color you can also scale it this way as long as it still works for you you start to get more of that color because if, if you're using on a simple gradient you're not going to get affected that much so now you see i'm having a little bit of that morning sky if i bring it a little bit more up i'm getting more of that morning sky but i like it further like this so if i open up again that ramp i can go more saturated so you get more of that kind of morning light and you have these kind of magic spots which i quite like we're not going to focus on the water today uh, obviously i faked a lot of stuff the only thing i don't like now this is never going to finish this tutorial i'm telling you like we're just going to keep on crafting it i don't like these rocks anymore we can put it into additive mode there's some grass coming in it and it's some bluish rocks not bluish but gray bluish okay so if i turn off the displacement on these rocks should activate the displacement as well and that should give a little bit more if it's the maximum displacement is one or was it 25 and 0 0.1 actually i always keep it 0 0.1 on both of those instances just kind of don't like these anymore to be honest so i'm just gonna get rid of those now i want to redo the whole thing do you have the same thing that you just finished the stuff and then you immediately hate it so essentially that is the, the tutorial i hope you enjoy the different method of scattering i hope you forgive me you know i'm not perfect so i try to do my best but like i don't know everything i'm still two years into this but i'm so happy to share with you all these methods because i'm sure you can use them and the stuff you posting and showing to me it's super amazing so Thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way. I know it's a long one, but it's super useful. You can watch a little bit further now. This is just going to be fast version of me trying to fix all the colors. Just not, I just don't want to bother you any longer.